Here we will examine a 3D gradient echo T1 weighted fat suppressed MRI of the thorax viewed in the coronal plane. In this kind of image, fat appears less bright than in a non-fat suppressed T1 image and water will appear dark. We are starting at the most anterior plane and moving posteriorly. Here we can see the internal thoracic vessels lateral to the sternum and we can also see the costal cartilages and the liver. More posteriorly, we can see the right lung and the heart. And now we can differentiate the left and right ventricles of the heart. Now we can see the right atrium is coming into view. We can see the tricuspid valve between it and the right ventricle. We can also see the continuity of the right ventricle with the pulmonary trunk. The stomach has also come into view. Here we can see more clearly the intraventricular septum which is between the right and left ventricles. We can also see now the continuity of the left ventricle with the aorta. We can see the left brachiocephalic vein crossing the aorta and more superiorly we can see the lumen of the trachea. The divisions of the major veins of the heart are now in view. Here we see the left and right brachiocephalic veins which are formed from the internal jugular veins here and the subclavian veins here at the venous angles. The brachiocephalic trunk is also visible emerging from the arch of the aorta. In this view we can see the left and right common carotid arteries. We can also see the superior vena cava being formed from these right and left brachiocephalic veins. Looking again at the heart we can see the aortic semilunar valve. The right subclavian artery, which had occupied a position posterior to the subclavian vein, is now in view. Now we see the left subclavian artery, here. The branching of the pulmonary trunk into left and right pulmonary arteries is now also evident. And just lateral to the superior vena cava, we can see the right pulmonary vein. We are now posterior enough to begin to see the left atrium. And now we can see a left pulmonary vein emptying into this left atrium. On the inferior aspect of the heart, we see also the inferior vena cava here emptying into the right atrium. In this plane, we can see the carina of the trachea where it divides into the left and right main bronchi. We can also see the esophagus traversing the diaphragm through the esophageal hiatus. We are now at the base of the heart we can see the aorta as it is beginning to turn inferiorly. If we look at the next plane, we can see the aorta here, more inferiorly, anterior to the vertebrae, here. In this plane, we can also see the inferior two pulmonary veins, here. The azygous vein, here, which is joining the superior vena cava, and which we, we can also see lower down the beginnings of the spleen. In this plane, we can see several of the right posterior intercostal arteries emerging from the descending thoracic aorta, here. We are now at the level of the vertebral bodies, and if we move more posteriorly, we begin to see the spinal cord, here, traversing the vertebral canal. At this level, we can see the emergence of the spinal nerves. We are now at the most posterior plane. We can see the erector spinae muscles, and the trapezius. One thing to note is that since MRI images can be viewed at any angle, there are some custom angles that we can use to examine the heart. Some examples of these are the two chamber view, in which we can see the left ventricle and the left atrium. We also have the three chamber view, in which we can see the left and left atrium and left ventricle as well as the aorta. In the four chamber view, which is also known as the horizontal long axis view, we can see all of the atria and all of the ventricles of the heart. And finally, in the short axis view, we can see the left and right ventricles. This concludes the presentation. Thank you for listening.